Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this episode, I'm going to be trying out a really fun team centered around a bunch of very cool Pokemon, but the main strategy that I wanted to showcase was the Orangru plus the Belly Bolt combination. Belly Bolt, of course, is one of the brand new Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, has a unique ability where if it gets hit by an attack, then the next electric type attack that it uses has an increase in damage output. And so the idea here is that you pair it with Telep the Oranguru. Belly Bolt has weakness policy, Oranguru has bulldoze. And so you're able to just set up Trick Room and then start going for plus two discharges next to the Oranguru, which is really fun. The team also has some other cool things such as loaded dice backs caliber, that's meant to be min speed, operating under Trick Room, as well as a Slush Rush, Citrus Berry, Belly Drum Satitan. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thank you so much as always for watching. If you do enjoy, it really mean a lot. If you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps me out a ton. But thanks as always for coming out and watching, and let's get started. First of all, I want to thank Viking VGC for building and sending in this team to me. Viking actually sent in two really fun evolution teams back during Sword and Shield. I'll link those down in the description below if you haven't seen them, but I think they're an incredible team builder and make really interesting Pokemon work to the best of their abilities. And so the Paste and the Rental are both down in the description below. And question of the day, I want to know how you would rate Belly Bolt just in terms of overall design out of 10. And so, yeah, we got to start off this team with, of course, the Belly Bolt. The idea behind this is, of course, you have the ability, right? Electromorphosis, which allows it to get charged every time it takes direct damage. And by charge, it means that the next electric type that it uses or next electric type attack that it uses will deal more damage. And so it synergizes really nicely with this Trick Room Oranguru. Oranguru essentially will set up Trick Room and based off the speed stat here, this is 58. Belly Bolt is 59. You'll be able to Bulldoze, activate Weakness Policy, activate the ability as well, and then Belly Bolt gets a really nice discharge off and a Rangarous Telepathy, so it ignores taking any damage from that discharge. And so you've got Mentorb here just to cover for taunts from things like Murkrow, for example. And so Belly Bolt and a Rangarous in itself is a pretty solid lead where you can often just tank a lot of attacks. As you'll notice, this Belly Bolt's really bulky. Part of the reasoning for this is because, like, the Belly Bolt's base special attack isn't really that amazing anyway, and so the idea is that you can at least sustain for a lot longer and you'll slowly chip away at your opponent with Discharge, especially when you get the Weakness Policy and the combination off. Um, but yeah, with this amount of bulk, you just survive a lot of common physical attacks in the format, which is really valuable. And you also have Slack Off for sustain, and so this can stick around on the field for a really long time. You actually have Weather Ball in the Belly Bolt here as well, and so the reason for that is because obviously Ground-type Pokemon are going to be kind of concerning. So Weather Ball allows you to set up a Bomb of Snow, bring in the Snow, and then Weather Ball will turn into an Ice-type attack. That's really valuable into things like Garchomp, and you also have Muddy Water to hit Ground-type Pokemon as well, for example. So Oranguru plus Belly Bolt is a cool lead combo. The Oranguru here has Bulldoze, Energy Ball, Instruct, and Trick Room. Energy Ball is the main thing to call out here, and it just gives you coverage into things that you know generally wouldn't expect to take super effective damage, so Water-type Pokemon, for example, as well as things like Gastrodon, which can be kind of annoying otherwise. And so this is one of the leads that you can go with. Uh, Amoongus also exists on this team, and it has Rocky Helmet. This is primarily to deal with Mouse Hold, which of course is a really common threat in the format right now. And so with that, you can lead like a Ranguru Amoongus often and just go like a Rage Powder into Trick Room. Uh, Amoongus, of course, can spore everything as well. Water Terror here just for defenses against Fire-type Pokemon like Torkoal, for example. Also, the Oranguru here is uh, the Fairy Terra, and so that's really valuable because often players are going to try to use dark type attacks to beat the Orangru, and so that gives you a resistance. Uh, and so it's going to be really critical in basically surviving turn one and getting Trick Room up. To round out the team, you've got a really cool Ice Trio. The first one is Satitan. This is a Belly Drum variant, and it's really meant to kind of uh, maximize bulk a little bit more. As you'll notice, Attack actually doesn't have any investment other than being adamant nature. Uh, and so the idea here is you can go with Amoongus and Satitan, just go for Rage Powder into Belly Drum. Uh, Satitan heals back with Citrus Berry. It's Water Terra, and so that's valuable for two different reasons. The one's obviously to give you some defenses against like fire type attacks. And the second is so that you know you get liquidation on this uh, Satitan as well, which is a nice combination. So another mode you could play with is like a Moongus, a Titan lead, a Bomb of Snow in the back, and then one of like Baxcalibur or Belly Bolt to finish things off. Finally, we've got Obama Snow. This is just a bulky Obama Snow with Aurora Veil, Blizzard Energy Ball. The one thing to call out is that it doesn't have Protect. Instead, it has Terra Blast with Rock, which is kind of cool. Uh, this can catch opposing like Fire type Pokemon off guard, for example, things like Torkoal. And so, yeah, uh, you can just catch opponents off guard with this. 
Final Pokemon here is Min Speed Bax Caliber with Swords Dance and Loaded Dice. And so the idea here is that this can actually be a pretty effective Trick Room Sweeper, right? Like you could go with something like Orangru Belly Bolt early, then bring out Bax Caliber. Abomasnow, of course, can set up the snow, increasing the defenses of all of your Ice type Pokemon here. Bax Caliber gets the Swords Dance off, and then it can really start sweeping. Uh, keep in mind that Orangru, of course, can utilize Instruct as well to take advantage of all of these Pokemon, um, especially if they've already attacked and then you're under Trick Room, for example. And so Loaded Dice here is just so that you can, you know, hit Icicle Spear more frequently which is really nice and turn those potential rolls into guaranteed KOs. And then you've got Stopping Tantrum just for some coverage against fire type attacks. So yeah, that's it for the team. Uh, people mentioned that they like seeing me do kind of like a weakness breakdown as well. So I'll talk about some brief weaknesses that I've run into when using this team. I think just to start, Spread moves are very common on this attack. You have Discharge, you have Muddy Water, you have Earthquake, and you have the Blizzard here as well. And so Wide Guard naturally is a move that has given me some trouble, whether it be from things like Armor Rouge or Hariyama, for example. Uh, and so like, yeah, Wide Guard can shut a Rangaroo plus Belly Bolt down pretty significantly. So if you're running that, that will give you an advantage. I think one other thing to notice that a Rangaroo and Belly Bolt here, like neither Pokemon actually have Protect. And so if you lead this, you have to have some conviction that you'll be able to survive, uh, ideally with both Pokemon. And that often can be done with like a turn one slack off into trick room fairy terra but you, you know your opponent does have the ability to potentially just double up onto a pokemon and ko them i had one game where i went up against like salamence arcanine against this lead and i thought i was fine i got hit by draco meteor plus flare blitz a rangaroo just fainted i didn't get trick room up and if trick room doesn't go up and you're committing to like the slow mode with the rangaroo belly bolt obama snow plus a fourth that can be really bad and so yeah like one of the of course strengths is if you you can flex like multiple picks with this team and so like uh if, if you have obama snow plus a titan in the back but a rangaroo and belly bolt in the lead then you at least have like a faster mode but i had one game where i just committed to the slow mode trick room just didn't go up and it was over immediately from there um and i, I think like one of the weaknesses in general um is that there are so few pokemon that carry protect now in you know a uh, best of one on the ladder people generally won't know that and so if you're using this team and other people haven't seen it you'll generally have that advantage but then if you do run into this team you can take advantage of the fact that like only one pokemon here has protect in amoongus naturally you have three ice types here and so like fire type and um Fighting type damage can be good. Um, of course, there are a lot of Terras that let you get around that, mainly the Satitan with Water Terra, um, but just keep that in mind. I think Satitan is a Pokemon that you do absolutely have to respect, right? Like Amoongus and Satitan can just sweep very quickly. Uh, opposing weather can cause some problems for that, obviously, because then Satitan doesn't necessarily always go first. I think if you can get a ton of damage onto Satitan before the Belly Drum and then put it in range where it's essentially just one attack away from getting knocked out, that can be big. I ran into a King Gambit, for example, which Iron headed me on turn one in snow. And I figured I'd be okay, like with the Citrus Berry, but then even the next turn, like, I don't know, Satitan had maybe like 10, 15 percent ish uh, HP, had Aurora Veil up, had the snow up, but a Sucker Punch still KO'd me and so yeah like don't give the Titan ideally opportunities to just set up the um, the Belly Drum, ideally. And then, like, keep in mind that Belly Bolt's damage output is actually not that crazy strong, especially with, like, not that much special attack investment. So you could potentially utilize that to your advantage as well. And then a Rangaroo often has the problem where it kind of just sits on the field and doesn't do much past turn one, other than maybe click Instruct and get value out of that. So preventing your opponent from really comboing Instruct, I think, is also valuable. So, yeah, those are just some of the, you know, points that I ran into while trying out this team. But certainly, I think... Uh, We'll have a lot of fun options here, so we'll see what our opponents can do against it. So, let's get started. Ooh, wow, Floatzel. Um, Floatzel's a Pokemon I actually wanted to feature. I think it's kind of underrated right now. Like, Wave Crash in Rain, Water, Terra, Choice Band, Life Orb does an absurd amount of damage. Hmm. Salamence's Tailwind Pressure potentially... So this is a scary team to go up against. Like, I don't think it's that easy to set up Trick Room. And I'm really worried about Amoongus, but I guess the question is, are they actually going to bring Amoongus into a triple ice plus my Amoongus matchup? Because, like, I think one approach I could take here is actually just lead a Rangaroo plus Amoongus, um, Rage Powder, Trick Room, and then go with the Belly Bolt combination afterwards. I think that could work. I'm not even sure I want to bring a Snow then, because it doesn't really deal that much damage. So Titan is a little bit more intriguing to me. King Gambit scares me a lot here, though. But I'm going to try this out. Basically, I don't feel confident enough to lead a Rangaroo Belly Bolt and get Trick Room up here. And the idea is so that Amoongus can protect our Belly Bolt, or sorry, our Rangaroo a little bit better. It's mainly that, that Floatzel that actually scares me, like a Pelipper Floatzel lead. If they lead that, this is actually pretty solid. Although... Now we run into one of the classic problems, which is the threat of Wide Guard on Pelipper. But that's going to be Salamence and King Gambit. Okay. 
Huh, that's interesting. Wondering if it's flying Terra Mence. I mean, I could. I think the best play here is actually to just maybe Trick Room, Terra Water, and then just Rage Powder. Because then I can just Spore in subsequent turns. The main problem is it might take me too long to get the Belly Boat combo off. But I wanted to get Trick Room up on turn one. I felt like this was my best bet in doing that. So they're not going to go for a Terra on their end. They're not going to protect. Get Rage Powder off. Hurricane! Wow, just blind. Okay. And Cleave. I would expect to survive that. I don't. That's because you're... Oh, no. I, at first, I was like, that's Life Orb. Um, that's honestly okay, though. The idea was to make sure that I got Trick Room up here, and now it's a free switch into Belly Bolt. So now I can just Bulldoze into Discharge. I wonder if that's Choice Ban, honestly, because I was not expecting to actually get KO'd by that on Amoongus. But now it's time to click Bulldoze and Discharge. Although it looked like Amoongus, well, I had uh, over 50% after that Hurricane, so I actually didn't need to commit my Terra there, but I don't know, I was worried about like flying Terra, physical Salamence one-shotting Amoongus, and then Cleave just one-shots a Rain Guru. So yeah, I was down to go for that. And if Hurricane misses there on turn one, they're also just in bad shape, right? So don't mind it too much, but let's go for the Bulldoze Discharge combo now. My only fear is King Gambit being really slow. Because King Gambit's base speed is actually not that great. If they're like min speed, for example. But they're going to switch. Okay, that works for me. What is coming out there? That's Pelipper. That also works for me. And the reason that's actually huge is because Discharge will bring you down to Focus Sash. Oh, double switch. Amoongus, maybe? It's probably Amoongus, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, that makes things a little bit dicier for me. Yeah, that actually makes things very dicey because I'm not going to KO them. That's a really good switch. And then they can just Spore Belly Bolt now. Yeah, which is not ideal. How do I get around that? Hmm. It's kind of a pain, right? It's tough to cover for, like, all the modes on my opponent's team here. Uh, Discharge comes out. Okay, they're not Focus Sash on Pelipper, so that's just eliminated. Moongus does get paralyzed. A single full para here would really put them in a tough spot, I think. Uh, you know, now it's like you probably just spore into Belly Bolt. I've got Bax Caliber in the back, which isn't really super strong here. It does have Stomping Tantrum, but Spore should go into Belly Bolt right now, right? I've actually never seen this interaction before with Instruct, like instructing ourselves when, if we get put to sleep. I'm curious about it. So I'm gonna just go for Instruct and Discharge here. Belly Bolt does fall asleep. We take a turn of sleep. Yep. Okay, so Instruct will go off. Oh, does it just stay asleep does that burn a sleep turn because i would actually think so which is actually really interesting if so that's like a new mechanic i've just never really run into huh okay cleave knocks out the oranguru which is scary uh bombasta would have been better for me to have in the back here but i don't know i think like amoongus king gambit pelipper was a really tough trio to break through no matter what and i had to respect the float so uh, so th there's a chance to get full parrot here, right? That's definitely a possibility. I don't think stomping would KO them anyway. Like what I think what I want to do is go for Icicle Spear here into Discharge. So para here on Amoongus would be huge. Then Baxcalibur could KO Amoongus. Yeah, I'd love to know the 
confirmation on whether or not when I use instruct on a, a sleeping belly bowl, like that commits another turn of sleep from my end. Because if so, that just drastically increased my odds of waking up this turn, right? Which is very interesting. Hmm, they're gonna Terra here, okay. Terra Dark, Terra Steel. What's it gonna be? Terra Dark, okay. I mean, you get to do more damage with Cleave this way, makes sense. Also gets rid of your steel. Okay, Mungus does go two for two through the paras, which is tough. And Belly Bull just stay asleep, unfortunately. That will probably be game over then, I think. Um, well, they went for Cleave, maybe not, let's see. Yeah, I can survive that. Hold on, this is still winnable then. Because we just take sleep turns with both mons right now. How many turns of Trick Room are left? It's the last turn of Trick Room. You've spored. This can just protect, but what I can do is like... If you protect, I can slack off. Like, I'm wondering if they, you know, try to sucker punch me here out of fear of, you know, I wake up and then just KO you. So I'm definitely down to Icicle Spear here. The problem actually is if I Icicle Spear and then Salamence comes in, you can just pretty easily pick up a double KO, right? Well, it depends if Slack Off allows me to then survive and then get a Discharge to double KO. Okay, I'm going to go for Slack Off here because I think Sucker Punch or Protect makes sense from their end, but they actually switch. That's interesting. I mean, it's huge if I just wake up with both Pokemon here, right? Because I would get the Slack Off off and I would get to Spear the Amoongus. Okay, Moongus protects. Okay, that's smart. That's smart. Yeah, makes sense. Ellie Bolt does wake up. The problem is Salamence, like, is a special set, so Draco Meteor now coming out into Baxcalibur doesn't, you know, seem to be uh, much of a surprise. I do take a turn to sleep there. Trick Room expires. Yeah. It's looking pretty tough. Um, but they could miss Draco Meteor here. I think that's potentially the win con. Miss Draco, Icicle Spear, KOs, and Moongus discharge onto the Salamence. It's Dragon Pulse. I would still expect that to KO. Oh, that did not KO. That was not even close, actually. Baxcalibur does wake up. Okay, hello. So Icicle Spear with loaded dice here should get the knockout onto a Moongus. I wonder if it was correct to go for another slack off there. I'm also hoping my own discharge doesn't KO Baxcalibur, but I think it might. It's a really fun game either way, but yeah, Moongus was just a huge problem for me. We one-shot both Pokemon. Okay. Wait, this is so close now, because it earlier looked like I could potentially survive a cleave. Oh my gosh, it's so close. Belly Bolt, can you hang on from Dark Terra Cleave and finish off the game with the Discharge? Either way, it is a really fun game, so that can't be too too sad. It would be a single target boosted Discharge, so it should KO. They should just attack here. Don't give me the chance to slack off. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I feel like in my gut it's going to KO. But it's close. It's very close. Let's see. Belly Bolt! <laughs> okay, plus two, single target, discharge now boosted. Oh my gosh. <sighs> that was nuts. I actually can't believe we uh, we won that. It looked so bad as soon as Amunga switched in, but I think the fact that Pelipper didn't have Focus Sash was really good. And I, I was really surprised that they switched out the King Gambit immediately out into Salamence. But yeah, them having Dragon Pulse over Draco Meteor is also a big deal because we survived that pretty comfortably with the Baxcalibur. Oh my goodness, that was an, that was just nuts. That was absolutely nuts. What a game for uh, Belly Bolt and Oranguru there. That was so fun. Like I was okay with uh, either outcome there in the end, but I, I didn't expect Belly Bolt to actually just be able to pull up the sweet there in the end. So oh, I need I need a breather after that. Okay, Mousehold, Indidi, Armor Rouge, Florges, Hydreigon, and Golden Go. 
I get pretty nervous fighting against Armor Rouge because it can wide guard and has just really good offense across the board into us here. There's also a Mouse Hold, which makes me want to use a Moongus for redirection. I think like NDD Armor Rouge is probably the main lead to beat. I'm, I'm thinking about something like Satitan plus a Moongus. I could pressure with Spore as well as Belly Drum with this duo. I think I want a Bomb of Snow potentially in the back. I don't know, like a Rangaroo Belly Bolt here just feels one kind of hard to set up. I'm just worried about Mouse Hold as well. Like they do have a fair amount of offense. Um, Obama Snow, Satitan. Obama Snow is Focus Sash, so allows me to get a Blizzard off, which isn't necessarily bad. Also sets up the Snow. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Satitan mode in this one. And then for the last one, maybe Max Excalibur, honestly, because I'm not sure a Ranger or Belly Bolt really have much value. And this at least can, like, take an attack and respond with damage. I don't think the matchup is that good, though. Like... The problem is I don't think any of the modes feel super, like I feel super co uh, confident with here in this one. So let's see. Okay, what are we aiming to do? Let's say ideally, like I'm thinking Terra, Mungus, and Spore turn one, depending on the lead. Mouse hold and Indy, okay. I'm even more inclined to think that now. Wait, I don't need a Terra with this, though, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, this is actually pretty solid, because we have Rocky Helmet Amoongus. So, like, Mouse Hold might just KO itself through it, right? Like, what I can do is just Rage Powder here, turn one. And Belly Drum. I'm down for that. The other consideration, I think, was to protect the Titan, Terra, Amoongus, and then Spore. I don't think that's a terrible option either, honestly. That may have been better. I just really wanted to see Mousehold KO its itself from uh, Population Bomb. Cool. So we'll just trade Redirection on turn one here, which I think is fine. And time for Rocky Helmet to do its job. <laughs> nice. Two hits. Three hits. Then this is one of the ways you can counter Mousehold, everybody. This is exactly why I led this. And you can see they just take more damage as, uh, relative to me, right? So Mousehold is about to KO itself. Beautiful. It's one of those times where you want everything to hit. So we've cleared the field of Mousehold. This is a you know pretty cool solution to Mousehold right now. And now I just get Belly Drum off with the Titan, which is awesome as well. I think the main problem is now I'm worried about the Armor Rouge coming in. And then with Armor Rouge coming in, the question is... Well, actually, if you have Wide Guard, that means you're not attacking me. And if you're not attacking me, then I'm not really that scared, right? I mean, I guess the NDD could go for... Hmm, Psychic? That'd be the main concern. I could always switch in Terra Water and Ice Spinner. Oh, wait, that play is actually really sick, no? Oh, it's actually just Golden Go coming out. But they have Air Bloom, that explains it, okay. Golden Gold. I can't spore you. Amoongus could switch out because we have Regenerator. Got Bax Caliber in the back. I mean, I think I want to Terra a Titan here and Ice Spinner into the NDD slot. Which also gets rid of terrain. Um, okay, I'm gonna go into a bomb of snow here. Terra, ice spinner. Although, actually, I think the more optimal play here was sacrifice a Moongus. because, like, a bomb of snow is focus ash. Like, basically, the decision making this turn was I want Bax Caliber at full HP because even with super effective attacks from my opponent's side, it can get like decent damage off. Um, Air Bloom Golden Ghost definitely, yeah, annoying to deal with here, but makes it easier for my opponent to switch in. That being said, you know, so Titan gets to come in, you know, and with Water Terra here, make your rain isn't nearly as threatening. I'm curious about the item on NED, like Focus Sash here, feels like a possibility. No protect or follow me. We get Ice Spinner off. No Sash. Okay, great. And that gets rid of Terrain. Excellent. Although it means I could have just gone Liquidation there onto the um, Golden Ghost slot. Cool. Yeah, Make It Rain doesn't do that much. 
That was a crit on Satidin too. Wow. That really doesn't do very much. Unfortunate to get crit, but the fact that we still have as much HP as we has is pretty awesome have is pretty awesome. Um Yeah, I mean it helps that they're not life orb or choice specs. The final Pokemon is Armor Rouge. So the main thing about Armor Rouge here is I don't know what Terra type you are right now, right? Um and I can't protect with the Titan to like scout it out for a turn, which is also a little bit annoying. But Terra Fire shouldn't be good here. Like I can just liquidation either slot. Terra Grass, I think, is the main thing I'm worried about. But if you're Terra Grass, then Blizzard becomes super effective. So I think here I'm down to just Blizzard and then liquidation into Golden Go. Nice. And they wide guard. Cool. That's totally fine. No reason for me to click Earthquake here. I would hope plus six liquidation water terror KOs, but I don't know how bulky Golden Go is here. Amazing. Oh, I am so happy. In the first two games, I got to feature two completely different modes with the Belly Bolt and the Satitan. That's what this team can do. That's what this team can do. And so, yeah, you get protection from there, but you know, there's no way they can win the game from this angle. But you can see the tech, right? Like having the uh, Amoongus to deal with Mousehold was such a big deal. And so that's exactly why I didn't want to go with Belly Bolt plus Orangru. Because with that, like the Mousehold can just blow something up immediately, right? And Mousehold, in theory, looks really good in this matchup because nothing resists the uh, population bomb uh, or is immune to it. And so, yeah. And I figured even if my opponent didn't lead that, like Amoongus and Satitan is just a solid lead, right? I could always just go for Rage Powder Belly Drum with that combination, um, regardless of what my opponent goes for, and then try to sweep with Satitan. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad to have already featured the Belly Drum combo as well as the Belly Bolt combo. This team is so fun. Okay, we've got Tyranitar, Garchomp, Rotom Heat, Corviknight, Gastrodon, and Amoongus. Does not look fun to play up against, honestly. I think, um... Rotom Heat's a pretty big problem in itself. Like, Belly Bolt struggles a little bit here. They have Double Ground and Rotom Heat and Amoongus. We do have Muddy Water, at least. Oh, I guess Orangru has Energy Ball, though, so that allows me to clear Gastron, at least. Excalibur with Swords Dance is interesting. Hmm. I am intrigued by the idea of Belly Bolt Oranguru. I don't know if it's good, though. Okay, I'm cutting down with the Bomb of Snow and Bax Caliber in the back. I think, like, Satitan is interesting here, but it has to worry about Rotom Heat because Rotom covers for both Ice and Water and can will with me And then Gastrodon just existing can redirect those super effective liquidations away from things. But I'm hoping the energy ball um, on the Orangru can catch our opponent off guard in this one. That would be sick. Let's see what they go with. Okay. Amoongus Corviknight. Hmm. Ah, uh, well, Amoongus is just the pain, as we had seen previously. I could go Discharge and Struck Discharge to start, which honestly I don't hate. Or I could let them, like, willingly let them put me to sleep and go from there. I'm kind of down for Discharge, Instruct, Discharge. Um, oops, let's make sure we target the right thing with Instruct. Mainly because it gives me two para chances on Moongus as well. Bulk up, okay. I'm okay with that. I don't know if Discharge, Double Discharge will KO. If I had Terra, it would have, I think. But without Terra, I'm not confident. Uh, I think we're just going to fall short. Any paras? There's one. Okay. The problem with bulk up Corviknight here is I'm worried about it having Roost um, as well. So even though I get this much damage off on turn one, it might not actually result to anything if Amoongus just spores the uh, Belly Bolt slot. Oh, but they spore into Oranguru. Okay. Okay. 
leftovers. Yeah, my fear is that you're just gonna roost right now, right? But I guess, oh wait, but I can just outspeed you potentially depending on your speed investment. So I'm just gonna burn a turn of sleep here and then discharge. Okay, they switch. Probably Gastrodon coming out or Garchomp. Ah, they did bring Garchomp. Okay, that's not good news for me. I think it's okay though. Like I'm gonna get put to sleep with Belly Bowl. I think the question is in this game now, how quickly can I wake up with my Pokemon? I guess Amoongus could get parried here. No para. Take her turn to sleep. Spore into Belly Bolt, presumably. Because it's fairly easy now to just withdraw Belly Bolt out and go into the Obama Snow and pressure Trick Room. I'm down for that. Gives me immunity to Spore as well. Man, it would have been a sick read to have just hard switched into Obama Snow this last turn. I just really didn't want Corviknight to potentially get a Roost off. We have Weather Ball in this game as well, but right now Belly Bolt's not going to be able to do anything anytime soon. Good switch. Rotom Heat would be a problem. Ugh. I think this turn in itself is huge, like whether or not I can wake up. They're going to commit Terra. Okay, so it's at least good to see what Terra they are. What's it going to be? Ground. I'm okay with that. They're probably just clicking Earthquake here, you would imagine, right? Yeah. How much does that do to Ranguru? Man, they didn't bring Gastron, so Titan would have been amazing in this position if I had it in the back. Less than half to a Ranguru, okay. No, Ranguru does stay asleep, though, unfortunately. Okay, with that, I think it makes it really hard to win. I mean, not necessarily. Like, the, the question is whether or not they successfully KO a Ranguru this turn, and to do that, you'd have to double up into it, but then I would get a Blizzard off into your Garchomp, which would be a pretty big deal. So I'm actually going to click both Trick Room and Blizzard this turn. Because Bax Calibur now looks fairly strong against Rotom, Corviknight, as well as the Amoongus. But I think if I had Satitan over Bax Calibur here, um, we would have been able to win. I just didn't feel comfortable bringing Satitan in this matchup at all, given that uh, the team preview phase. So in a best of three, that's the adjustment I would make. Drop Bax Calibur for Satitan. But if we had gotten Trick Room up this last turn, I actually would have been in amazing shape, in my opinion. Dragon Claw, Obama Snow, interesting. Okay. And Overheat? I don't think either of my Pokemon faint here. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, but Garchomp doesn't faint. Oranguru, can you wake up? No! Oh, that sucks. I was actually so well positioned if Trick Room had just gone up there. Now they most likely win. I, unless Garchomp faints from Life Orb. If they faint from Life Orb, it's actually still doable. Oh, that's such a bummer, yeah. Because they didn't pick up a knockout onto either slot. Dang. And we don't have Ice Shard here. Okay, well, that's interesting. They switch into Corviknight. Okay, trying to maybe bypass an Ice Shard, which would make sense. Okay, I actually think that was a really smart play, yeah. You don't take Recoil from Garchomp this way, and you just get a double knockout. Oh, that really stings, yeah. Like, I think if we wake up with a Rengar, I actually win this battle. And we ate up a three-turn sleep, but that's what I get for taking it, right? <sighs> just so frustrating to survive with both Pokemon, and then also not one-shot the Garchomp with Blizzard from that range. But I think it's still winnable. Um, oh, and they bring out a Moongus. Okay, hold on. The fact they brought out Amoongus first is a big deal. And it gives me some potential because that slot is now kind of awkwardly locked in. Like, Bax Caliber could definitely pull this off. I don't want to Terra yet, though. Also, we get a defense boost from the snow. Hmm. And Belly Bolt hasn't even taken sleep turns yet, which is problematic. Like, the debate here is, do I want to Icicle Spear into Amoongus or just rush into the Rotom slot? Uh, I lean towards Spearing here. We'll burn a turn to sleep. 
Wow, they just discharge. Okay. I'll take that. Pair their own Amoongus. That's fine. Charges me, but that doesn't really matter. Not Rocky Helmet. We'll get the KO at least. Okay. Uh, it's such a shame we just missed the KO on Garchomp earlier. I also don't even know if Garchomp faints. Okay, uh, what other attacks have they revealed? Like, I don't... Did they ever overheat in this position, right? You just go for Earthquake plus Overheat. Because to me, it feels like in order to win the game, I need to rush into Rotom. Hope Garchomp is fainting from Life Orb here. But the decision this turn is, do I Terra to just Ice? Um, why would I ever do that? That doesn't make any sense, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to rush and just Muddy Water. But I think they just Earthquake plus um, Overheat here for a win. But they could miss Overheat. That's the win con. Okay. Ah, uh, it's a shame we didn't have a good defensive Terra in this position. That really could have saved us. Oh, Baxcalibur actually survives with more than I expected. Hold on. I'm not even sure an overheat KOs here. Did Garchomp faint from Life Orb? It does. Ah, uh, man, if we were Dragon Terra here, we would have won, I think. What is it? It's just Discharge. Glaive Rush comes out. <sighs> that is such a shame, and we don't have Ice Shard here either. Wow. That was so close. Unless we survive this, but I don't expect to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind losing a game like that. That was that was remarkably close. Um, yeah, like, if I just wake up with a Ranguru at any point there... Uh, earlier, that would have been great. Uh, if we get a slightly higher damage roll on the guard chomp with Blizzard, that would have been great. Um, I, I just didn't Terra in this game, but I never had a position to, right? Like, I don't think any of the Terras would have benefited me, which is a shame. If we had a defensive Terra on Belly Bowl or Dragon Terra on the Baxcalibur there, I would have won the game most likely. Couldn't really, I mean, Terra Bomb Snow wouldn't have accomplished anything. Terra Moongus wouldn't have accomplished much for us either. So, yeah. That was that was that was a really close game though. So honestly, no no shame in losing it. Um, because yeah, I'm wondering if it was a damage roll on Rotom there in the end as well. They survived with just the slurber of HP. Everything hung on with just a little bit of HP this game. Uh, like Corviknight at like 10%, Garchomp at 10%, Rotom at 10%. But you can see how uh, valuable the bulk was on my opponent's team there. But yeah, that was that was a really fun battle. Whoa. Okay, this is cool. Um, they have a Porion, which by the way is like kind of popping up as a tech to Dondozo. Gets access to Haze. Otherwise, you see some pretty clear synergies into the Armourouge, Tyranitar, Lycanroc, and then Sylveon. So, I think, like, one thing to worry about here is Lycanroc plus Tyranitar, right? They can just go for something like Rock Slide plus Assurance immediately. I'm kind of thinking about Orangaroo Belly Bolt, though, because I could Terra into Fairy defensively. Obama Snow in the back, and then... This is helpful. I actually lean towards Bax's Caliber here. So Titan's not bad. So Titan's definitely solid as well. Like Earthquake in general looks good here as well as Liquidation. Okay, I'm actually gonna go with Titan. So basically what I'm trying to accomplish in the early game is ideally go for the Discharge stuff. So for example, if they lead with Tyranitar plus the Lycanroc, I would expect them to Rock Slide plus like Assurance into a Ranguru. So what I can do is just like discharge Terra Fairy and then Trick Room. And then from there, we're, we should be in pretty solid shape. Okay, it is Tyranitar Lycanroc. I mean, of course, granted, they could target the Belly Bolt instead, right? But I would think you're worried about Trick Room going up here on turn one. Do you have to worry about getting flinched by Rock Slide? That's my main fear right now. But yeah, I do want to just go for Trick Room here and a discharge. Oh, sorry, I want a Terra first. Terra, Fairy, Trick Room. And I don't want to risk missing Muddy Water, so I'm fine with Discharge for now. And then afterwards, next turn, 
I can go for like the bulldoze into muddy water, for example. Can instruct. Okay, cool. They go for close combat. That also works. So I don't even have to worry about getting flinched right now. I wonder if they're going for assurance onto that slot. Excellent. Nice. This is where the Fairy Terra comes up huge. We take less than half there. Get the Discharge off. Excellent. And now we've got the setup going. Looks like Assault Vest Tyranitar to me based off that damage output. Fine. Um, now it's time to just click Bulldoze into Discharge. I do risk Paralyzing Tyranitar, which I guess is a little bit scary, but I don't, really don't want to risk a miss right now. Um. Yeah, this would be fairly bad, so I, I will go for Bulldoze and Discharge here this turn. So we get the Belly Bolt combo off, which is what I was looking for, which is awesome. What do I expect them to have in the back? Like, NDD Armor Rouge? If it is NDD Armor Rouge, okay, so they don't protect. They don't make any switches, no Terras either, which I'll take. So it drops Belly Bolt speed. Activates weakness policy, activates our ability. That's the whole combo. But Tyranitar should survive this, given how little Discharge did last turn. But it'll still do a good amount of damage here. And I don't expect them to be able to KO me in return. So the speed of everything drops. Great. And here's Discharge. And Oranguru ignores it. Excellent. Wow, that was a crit onto Tyranitar, and it still did not KO, which shows how bulky it is with Sandstorm plus the Assault Vest. They just go for Rock Slide. Perfect. Excellent. Now I can actually go for, for example, Instruct. I think the debate here, like the reason to not Instruct is if they bring out Armor Rouge, because then I can just keep clicking Wide Guard, which would be a little bit annoying. So we'll see if they have... If Armor Rouge doesn't come out here, I feel like the game is over, honestly. That's NDD coming out. Okay. Nice. That works for me. That makes me think they just straight up didn't bring Armor Rouge. But then why is there NDD in the back? I'm not sure. What would their final Pokemon be, really? I'm not 100% sure on that here. Um. Okay, well, I am down to just Instruct here. Instruct. And... Slack Off is interesting. Or I could just Discharge, obviously. Um, instruct for sure. Got a bomb of Titan in the back, which is pretty good. I think I'm done to instruct and slack off here, because I could see the NDD protecting as you um, sacrifice Tyranitar. Oh, <laughs> I messed that up. The ordering. Uh, I forgot that I dropped my own speed, so we actually move first. That's okay. Yeah, it would have been smarter to just discharge uh, instruct there. <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind as you use this team, because I definitely forgot about it, obviously, but that's okay. They just Dazzling Gleam. Cool. It's pretty good damage there, actually. Charges Electro um, Snow, so now I can bring in a Mob of, uh, a bomb of Snow. And then, like, so Titan should clean up this game for us, but yeah, that was a slight blunder by me. It's good to highlight these mistakes, I think, because uh, it's very easy to forget about something like that. Right, a rank grew speed doesn't get dropped by Bulldoze, but you're dropping everything else's speed. Uh, so I bring out a Bomb of Snow now. How many turns of Trick Room are left? Two. Uh, I'm down to just go for... I don't like setting up Aurora Veil. But I also think we can just KO the NDD potentially here. Yeah. We can just Blizzard and Discharge. Okay, they don't switch. Cool. Almost KOs NDD. Does get the paralysis onto a bomb of snow. But I don't think I... I mean, I could have gone for Muddy Water there. I just don't really want to risk missing. But I guess the odds of us missing are slimmer than us... No, no, no. But it's like... Para, it would have to be Para into full Para, right? Yeah. So the odds of missing Muddy Water are greater than Para into full Para. We just pick up a uh, double knockout there. So let's see what the last one is. They still haven't gone for Terra, but with the Titan being my last Pokemon, I feel fairly confident in being able to beat anything. That looks like Armor Rouge to me. Yes. Excellent. So like we have Liquidation obviously in the back and still have one more turn of Trick Room to work with. So I can just go for Aurora Veil vale here. I think the main debate is, do they go for a Protect right now? Um, 
I think it's fine to just click Discharge here because of the Satitan in the back. And they actually just end up forfeiting. Nice. Yeah, so obviously it could have been a little bit cleaner. The one turn where I forgot that um, Oranguru would move after the uh, Belly Ball. I was trying to get fancy there, but uh, if I just went Discharge that turn into Instruct. That just would have been a double KO. So we would have won the game a little bit faster. So it's always good, you know, even if you win games, like make sure like you catch your mistakes and, you know, try to improve from them because in this game it wasn't 100% perfect, but we had such a big lead uh, after turn one that we were in good shape. I think like my opponent could have brought out Armor Rouge, even if they didn't actually have Wide Guard on the set. I don't know that. And Wide Guard is so common on Armor Rouge, let in a best of one online, I would always expect them to have it. And so you could at least like play some mind games from that position. But yeah, I think this game highlighted, I mean, it highlighted most of the strategies, right? We got the Fairy Terror off immediately to prevent getting KO'd. We got the um, whole Belly Bolt combination off with Discharge at plus two special attack. Next to the Oranguru, which was really fun. And overall, yeah, that's exactly what this duo can do. As you can see, even when we're boosted up at plus two, like we don't necessarily pick up knockouts, but that's okay because we're so bulky and our opponents often aren't KOing us in return. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's episode. So thank you so much as always for watching. Had a ton of fun with this one and just excited to be able to feature Belly Bowl. And I think some of the games today were just absolutely nuts and really came down to the wire. So hope you enjoyed them. If you did, it would really mean a lot if you'd consider leaving a like or subscribing. My name is Aaron Cybertron Zhang, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.